Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'll be playing through the second mission in the Bloodborne Log Hunt campaign. And I am super excited about getting into this one. I had so much fun filming the first one, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you for all of you that did watch it, and those that left comments, I do really appreciate it, and I love hearing from you. I love going back and forth, hearing what I might have done wrong or made mistakes on, which I did make a couple of mistakes during the first video, so I will be going over some of those, and hopefully I won't make those same mistakes again. So other than that, there are some setup things that we have to go into before getting into the game itself, and I do want to show off some really cool stuff that I got in the mail. I put out a call during the first video for anybody that knew anybody that was doing 3D printed stuff or a shop or anything like that, as I was really hoping to get some 3D printed fog gates. And I had a couple of YouTube subscribers hit me up in the comments and let me know of this place that was doing it. So thank you to those of you that did. I know that they didn't go through the comments. It's something with YouTube where they remove any comments that have links in them and whatnot, I think, because I do get some early on when I release videos. And I've been reporting those uh, for them to remove them, and I think that they just have started removing all of them so i did get them i and i do really appreciate it so i did reach out to gomer's gadgets and gaming and he has an etsy shop and he makes some really cool 3d printed materials for a bunch of different games he has stuff for shadows of brimstone and all kinds of fantasy flight games and he has stuff for bloodborne so he was so nice and he sent me some of this stuff so i want to show it off first off those fog gates, these are so cool. He does did such a great job on these, and I cannot wait to uh, hopefully paint these at some point, but they look great, and I cannot wait to use these in the game. They really do make a big difference, at least for me personally. Now, he makes a ton of other stuff. There was also an accessory kit where you have uh, wound tokens, so he has one-point wound tokens. There's three-point wound tokens, and these have the number at the bottom of, of the... A base of him and then there's fives and there's even 10 point wound tokens then he has the markers for the different status effects so we have purple for poison and then for the frenzy markers he has these which are really nice and then he also has a couple of trays for the cards which is really cool so this first one is for the enemy action cards and it holds the cards up top and then you reveal them and place them here so i love this one this is so cool and there's another one that he sent me that i'll be showing off a little bit later in the video and then there's also the base set for the different players and these can be tailored into the different colors so you can have them match the player bases and all that uh, he sent me a black one so which is fine and with this one, these this tracks everything. It has a marker for your blood echo tokens. It has your marker for your health. It has a spot for your trick weapon that you can take in and out. And then it has all your, it holds a spot for your all your cards in the center of it. it has a spot for your gun. And then as you draw your cards, you can place them in these little slots above to hold them all nice. And then as you use them, there's a slot here that'll keep your discard pile going for you and then you have a section here for your tokens if you don't have these or even if you do you can place them in there so that you always know what statuses you have and then you have spots for your consumables and any of the other types of cards that you get throughout the game now i won't be using the, this particular thing in this video as i only have the one and it does keep the cards upright so you won't be able to see them from the top down view so that's the only thing the reason why i won't be using this in this video but these are really really nice he did a great job of them on them all of them have all their different insignias and everything on them so really really nice job on these and they're they're they've got a good weight to them they're even and all that they're not bent and everything else so definitely recommend this and i will have a link in the description below to his etsy shop so that you can go and check out all the cool stuff his pricing on them is very reasonable so i would definitely recommend it and i will be using everything else in the videos i love this stuff it is so cool and he did such a great job on them so with that being said, let's get into the game. So the setup, first off, we're going to go ahead and take care of that, is there's a couple of steps with this one. So first, let's go ahead and get these monsters out and see where our enemies are going to fall. All right, so we have the Scourge Beasts, uh, Huntsman's Minions, and the Hunting Mob. So I have to rearrange these real quick. All right, then we'll go ahead and put out the upgrades. So we'll see what we get here. Ooh, we got a new dodge. I know who's going after that. 
All right, and then there is a couple of additional steps with setup with this one. So first off, with mission two, we have some special setup instructions. So this one says, before creating your tile deck, you're going to take out the graveyard, the tomb, and a random unused tile. You're gonna connect the graveyard to one side of the central lamp tile. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that one here. And then you're going to connect the random tile you drew on the other side, the opposite side of your central lamp tile. And then you're gonna connect the tomb to one of the exit points on that tile. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that up here. Uh, from there, that is all that that one has instructions for. So then we would continue on. Now, first off, we do have to populate this. So I have a couple of consumable chests that I'll place out. And then the enemies. So we have a huntsman's minion here and we have a mob over there. And that'll take care of that. From there, then we do have, I do have the start of the hunt card that I have to reveal and read. So let's go ahead and do that. That is card 18. So with this one, this is the source of the scourge. We have taken the first steps towards cleansing central Yarmin of the scourge infestation, but our efforts have not gone unnoticed. The beasts have fled deeper into the district and some seek to avoid us. Perhaps some bait can be used to lure them out. So with this one, during their turn, hunters may discard one consumable to spawn one Scourge Beast in their space. Each time you slay a Scourge Beast, you're going to gain a Corpse Token. And hunters may discard held tokens while on the graveyard tile, placing them onto this card. When this card has a number of those tokens equal to the number of hunters plus one, so in my game, I'll need three tokens on there, then I'm going to reveal and read card 19. So I'm going to go ahead and place this out. So other than that, the there I do want to go over a couple things that I made mistakes on during that first video. So first off, at the very end of the video, there was one thing that I didn't point out, is that you're always going to keep all of your insights that you did during that mission. So I ended up doing all four of those. So I have all four of those out, as some of those are going to come into play further down the line as you play through your campaign. So those will be kept out. I'm going to just slide them over to the side so I have a little bit of extra room here for my other missions that I will have going on through this. The other thing that I made a mistake on, which I ended up doing during the uh, trial run of that as well, is my hunter, uh, when he went to the hunter's dream, I forgot to take his, to his marker or his figure off the board and place it on the hunter's dream, and then I didn't catch that. And so during the next his next turn, I just played him as normal, which ended up actually costing me. I ended up having to spend an, an additional stat card of his to move where if I would have just brought him back from the Hunter's Dream, it would he would have just been there initially right off the bat. So it didn't uh, change the outcome at all, which I was really happy about. I would have hated to to get an advantage out of that. Um, but it's just something that I'm definitely going to have to keep in mind for this one uh, and, and that. So if you catch anything else, let me know in those comments below. I love hearing from you and hearing all the different things, whether it's good or bad or whatever. Uh, let me know how I'm doing. So other than that, let's go ahead and get into the game. So I have to start off by placing my hunters out in the central lamp tile. So I think I'm going to send my one guy that way. And with the Holy Blade, I think I'll send her, I think I'll send her up initially. So we'll go ahead and try that. All right, and from there, that is everything. So now we're gonna go ahead and move into our turns. So I'll go ahead and draw. Nice. And then over with her. Okay. Not too bad. All right, so. Who do I want to go with first? I think I'm going to go with the Saw Cleaver first. So I'm going to spend one of my cards to move. So I'm going to go ahead and move two spaces. And then this mob is going to pursue me. So they're going to move into my space with me. Then, oop, I forgot that's from before. Let me put that back over there. Okay, so from there, then I'm going to go ahead and attack them. So let's do, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. And with them, both of their attacks are medium speed. So I'll go with my 
Yeah, I'll go with the slow speed. So this one lets me draw one card, and I cannot suffer Frenzy, Poison, Stagger, or Stun. And then I got another draw one. Okay, so then I'm going to reveal their card. Let's see what they do. It's a basic attack. So I could dodge, but... Mm, no, I don't think I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm going to use his card first. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that's going to stagger them, and so their attack won't go off. And I'm going to do three damage to them, so I'm going to go ahead and place that over there. And then it's back to me again. So I think I will do another attack. This is going to let me draw another card. And then I'll draw another one of theirs. It's another basic attack. So this one I will dodge. And then it lets me clear the card. So again, I don't take any damage for that. I'm going to deal two to them, which is enough to eliminate them. So I'll get my Blood Echo token. They're going to be removed. And then I have one action left, or one card left. So I could either pick up that treasure, or that consumable, or I could flip. Now I do get to draw one and heal because I did kill them. So I am at full health at this point, so I don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and do both of those. So I'm going to spend the this one here to clear this card and flip. That way I'm ready to go next turn. And then I'll spend this one to pick up that consumable. So let's see what we get. I have the throwing knife. So this is going to deal one damage to one enemy within one space. All right, so that is the end of his turn. Then we move into the enemy activation. There aren't any enemies connected to his tile at this point, so we don't have to worry about that. So then I'm going to move over to the Holy Blade. So with her, she is going to start off by doing a move action. So I'll spend that one to move up. And that's going to reveal the Great Bridge. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it this way. That's going to... Then I'll move in. It's going to have a consumable placed on it and a mob. Now, I'm going to go ahead and end my move there because it's, it is one of the spaces I'm looking for. So with the Great Bridge, that's going to have me reveal card 35. So... Last Minute Rescue. As you enter the massive bridge, you hear the familiar gunshot of a hunter's firearm. Rushing forth, you come across the sight of a hunter slumped against a wall, firearm raised as a towering figure approaches. So with this one, I'm going to have to reveal card 36. I'm going to surround the great bridge tile with fog gates. Sweet! I get to use them for the first time. They're so cool. And then I'm going to spawn a huntsman's minion. So I have to switch out these guys for a huntsman's minion instead of the usual enemy and it respawns at that space during the respawn step if that's taken place and then i if once i slay the huntsman's minion then i'm going to reveal card 37 so let's go ahead and reveal card 36 here real quick so this one is indomitable so this one has me place one inside token on this card. So I have to do that. When the Huntsman's minion would be slain, instead remove the token and heal all the damage from it. The token is returned on the resummon, and you're going to replace his special with this one. So this is going to be a slow attack. It does four damage, and it blocks two from the hunter's attack, and it cannot be staggered. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to place that off to the side. And then it moves into my hunter's turn. She only has two cards left. So I think I am going to... I think I'll end my turn there. So I'm going to go ahead and attack him during the enemy's turn, as he's going to activate during that point. So I'm going to go ahead and play that card there. That's going to do three damage. And let's reveal his card. It's a special. So his special is going to be that one. So it's a slow attack. It does four damage. And it's going to block two of my uh, uh, the damage from my hunter's attack. And it cannot be staggered. So I am going to dodge. I'll place that there. That's going to clear that. And anytime I clear a card, I'm going to do one damage to an enemy. So I'll go ahead and do that. Whoa, slippery. Then our attacks are going to go. So first off, mine's going to do three damage. And 
So that'll take care of that. And then his is going to go. And his is four damage, which I blocked, but it is going to block two damage from the hunter's attack and it cannot be staggered. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with a just a one point damage instead. Okay, that is the end of that hunter's turn. So then we'll end the round. We'll advance this and move into a new round. So each one of our hunters will reveal new cards. Oof, lots of drawing cards. Okay. I think I'll go with her first. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw, I'm gonna play this one here and I'll do another medium attack. So this one lets me draw two cards and I get to choose one to keep, one to discard. So I'll go ahead and keep that one, discard that one. And then we'll reveal his card, it's an ability. So what is his ability? So this one says, a hunter must discard one card or their attack suffers minus two speed and they cannot dodge. And then we're gonna flip another enemy action card over after that. So I guess I'll discard this one so that I can still dodge. So then I have to reveal a new enemy card. It's a special, so again, his special is going to trigger. Uh, I will dodge it, and I'm gonna do another damage to him from, from that, clearing that off. So he's up to three now. And then my attack itself is going to do two, which his is going to block, so no damage done through that. So then I am down to my last card. Ooh, um... What to do? Well, I think I'm gonna use my ability card up here, or my rune. With this one, it lets me discard one card from my hand to return one card from your discard pile. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get rid of this one here and pick up this one as I'm going to need it to dodge his attack that he's gonna hit me with. So I'm gonna end my turn there. Moving into the enemy's turn, I'll go ahead and reveal his card. It's the last one, it's a basic attack. I am going to go ahead and dodge that, and that'll clear doing another damage. So he's up to four, so I'm slowly picking away at him. And that will end her turn, as, as that is the enemy phase. So then I'm back over to the Saw Cleaver. So let's see, he's got some, some nice cards here. He has no dodging cards though, so that's that's the only downside to that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and move down with him. So I'll go ahead and spend that one there. I'm gonna go ahead and shift this up a touch so that I can get this card in. All right, and I think I'll do it this way. Okay, so I'm gonna move in, then I have to populate, so we have some scour a Scourge Beast and a mob in that space there. Well, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and spend this to refresh my firearm, because I, I think that's gonna be, that could be important. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I will spend, I'll spend this one. Do I wanna go with the quick attack? I'm gonna try it on this and see what happens. All right, so then we're gonna draw. It's a basic attack, so I am gonna use that Hunter's Pistol to avoid that damage, and then I'll resolve my attack, so it's gonna do two, three, and then my Stagger has the special ability to do another damage, so that's four damage, so that will eliminate that guy right away. And then anytime I defeat a Scourge Beast, I do get that Corpse Token, so that is one of those that I needed. And I think I will end my turn there so that I can deal with this enemy. So the enemy is going to move into my space, that mob, and they're going to attack. So let's see what they do. Or uh, first off, I want to definitely want to retaliate. So I'm going to attack with that. And it adds plus one to my speed. So I'm actually attacking at speed four. And then they are going to do a basic attack. So their basic is two damage at speed two. So mine is going to stagger them. So I won't take any damage. And because of the stagger, it's gonna add an additional damage to them, or to my attack, so I'm gonna do two damage to them with that. Okay. And that's all that, that we can do there. So then it's going to end the round, move into a new round where I will 
Can move that up as well. And then we're going to reveal new cards. Okay. All right. I think I will go with my Holy Blade first. Because I think I want to go with a Hunter's Dream with him once I am done with that mob. Because I'll have three tokens. And she is still working on that big guy. I've had a couple of basics come up already. So there's one more basic in there. Two specials. And his, his specials are, are killing me. So what do I want to do here? I cannot be staggered. Um... I think I'm going to have to spend one to flip her ability first. So yes, let's do that. I'm going to flip that over. Oh, yeah, completely forgot to use this. So th this, with this card, this is a really cool card. You can place it on one of your slots, and this is going to add a plus one damage to that slot. So I should have been using that all along. I can't believe I forgot that. See, it's always there's always something that you forget. Uh, and then anytime you you transform your weapon, this gets moved to the next side. So you're never going to actually spend it, uh, but it does count against your limits of two items. So I think I will place it on the combo slash. And I will go ahead and place this one on there as well. So that's going to let me stagger and draw one. So I get to draw a card. And let's see what happens with that. So he will draw his card. It is a special. Of course it is. So it's going to do, it's a slow attack, does four damage, and it's going to block two of my damage that's going to go through, and it cannot be staggered. I could dodge it, though. So I, I will do that, as it is the same speed as that. So then that dodge will get cleared. I don't take any damage. I'll do only one damage... Or I don't do any, I do one damage because of my card here. So that is going to be enough to at least defeat his initial start. So I'll go ahead and clear that insight token and clear those. And then because of that, I will transform the weapon for free. So I'll get to clear that. And then I do get to place this on one of these areas. So I'll go ahead and place it on the slash there. And. I'll go ahead and attack him again with the with this one here. I'll do it on that. And then I do get to draw a card out of that. So hopefully it's going to be a dodge card here. That would be really handy to have. It is not. It's a stagger and draw. Okay, so let's see what the enemy does. It is an ability. What is their ability? So it is going to flip another enemy action. The hunt's mob, is, its next attack is going to be a plus one speed. Oop, wrong, wrong card, wrong card. It's the min, it's the huntsman's minion. So with this one, the hunter must discard one card, or their attack suffers minus two to its speed, and it can they cannot dodge. And then you're gonna flip another enemy action over. So minus two speed really doesn't matter at this point, point. and I cannot dodge anyways. So. I'm going to let it go through, and then I have to flip another card over. It's another special, so it's going to deal four damage to me. As his attack is going to go off first, because mine is slower now. And it cannot be staggered, which doesn't matter. Then I'll resolve mine, which is going to do three damage. He's going to block two of that, so it just does one to him. Okay. Then, uh... Oh. I can end my turn there, which probably is a good point at this. I get one more draw, so if I don't get a uh, if I don't get another card there, that's going to be big bad problems. All right, so yeah, I'm going to end my turn there. Enemy is going to activate. He will attack. I'm going to attack him as well. I will go ahead and do that one there. I draw a new card. It is not a dodge. So I'll reveal it is a basic attack. His basic does three damage, and it is a slow attack, so mine would go off first. It's going to do two damage to him, so that puts him up to three. 
and it is going to stagger and he doesn't have anything that can stop that so at least I don't take any damage from that okay um, so that is the end of her turn that takes care of all that so then we're back over to my saw cleaver and that definitely did not go to plan I was really hoping that she'd be able to bring him down so that I could go to the hunter's dream but if I do that now then he's going to reset and heal all those wounds that I've dealt to him which, depending upon how my cards come up, that might not be a bad thing anyways, because she is not doing well. Okay, um, I will do, I'm going to go ahead and do a basic. I'll do the stagger on him. So then we have to shuffle the enemy cards. Let's see what comes up. As long as... <laughs> yeah, as long as I don't get a special or a, the, his ability first and then a special after that, I'm okay. If I get the ability and the special, then that's not good. And it's a basic attack. All right, so his basic is a speed two. Mine's going to go off first as it's quicker. I do one damage from that and then one damage because it does stagger. So that's two and that will take care of that mob. All right. And I get that third blood echo that I was after. So at this point, um, I might want to move instead then and see what else I can do. So I think I'll do that. I will move for one. And I could move for the second one. It's not going to matter too much. I think I'll hold off there. Or I could teleport to any space and I could reveal a new tile instead. I think I'll do that instead. Since I'm going to the Hunter's Dream anyways, I might as well take advantage of some of this stuff. So I'll use that to move here. I will go ahead and spend this now to reveal a new tile. So let's do, it's a Huntsman's Minion. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it, do that. Move in, that's gonna add a consumable to that space and the Huntsman's Minion. I think I'll end my turn there. So then he's going to move in and attack, and I don't have anything to do on that. That was really bad on my part. I should have probably just used that to pick up the consumable. I was not paying attention. Okay, so he is simply going to do an attack. It's a special, so it's going to do four damage. And then it does two damage to all other hunters in that space, which he doesn't have anybody else in there with him currently. So that's just four damage. Okay. Uh, then that's the end of the turn, so that will be moved. I will discard this. And... I think she will discard that as well. Then we will draw new cards. So I got another one. That's and all right, I got a dodge. That's good. Good, good. And then with his, his card, I've got one there. So I did make one other mistake. He had that card that I drew. Uh, that was actually an extra card that I forgot to clear off from my previous game when I was testing this one out. So that is actually over what he was supposed to have. So I just simply removed that one from his hand. So now he's going to draw his new cards. Well, let me go with her first and let's see what we can do here. So she's got three hit points on him. She just needs to do two more. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one to flip her weapon. And I'll go ahead and add this to add this to the combo slash 
Yeah. I'll add that to the combo slash, and then I'll go ahead and do the attack. This lets me draw two cards, choose one to keep, and discard the other. I will keep, I guess I'll keep that one. We'll see what happens here. The enemy is going to respond. He does an ability. So his ability is a hunter must discard one card or their attack suffers two, and they cannot dodge. Uh, to speed, so that would drop it down to a zero speed. That's definitely not good, so I will discard that card so that I can dodge. Then he reveals a new card. It is a basic attack. So his basic is uh, speed, uh, slow speed. So I'm not going to spend my dodge, as this is going to do enough damage to him that it does three damage, so that will defeat him. Okay, I get my insights or uh, blood echo token there. It will clear the fog gates as I did defeat him. And then I have to reveal card 37. So let's do that. So this is the continuation of the last minute rescue. Checking over the hunter, he still lives, but only barely. He is not a hunter of the dream, however. He is, if he is to survive, we must get him someplace safe. So I'm going to place one survivor token on the Great Bridge. So I'll go ahead and do that. And any hunter may pick up the token when they move out of this space. It respawns onto the Great Bridge into that spot if the hunter teleports or goes to the dream. You're going to complete this mission when the hunter ends the hunter ends a move on Yusufika's clinic or on the chapel tiles. So I have to make a choice. I think I want to take him to the clinic over the chapel though. So I got to find the clinic still. Okay. Uh, so that is that part there. And she has one card left to do something with. She does get to transform her weapon for free, so I will do that. Switching back over to that side. I'll keep that one there. I have one action left. I have two hit points, so I don't want to be too, too much. Hmm. But if I can do some damage to that Huntsman's Minion and then bring him over, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try. So her last card, this is, uh, this is going to be risky. Her last card I will play to move. So I'm going to move her one space here. And I'll bring that one there with me. Uh, it will cause this guy to move during after that because I'm going to end her turn there. So he'll move into her space. Then it goes over to my other guy here. So... I will do, I'll discard that to flip over. And then I will attack him. So let's see. I'll go ahead and do this. That lets me draw a card. And. Okay, then I'll reveal his. It's a basic attack, so I will dodge that. Play that to dodge. That will do three damage to him, so I'll go ahead and add that there. And then I'm going to spend his... Ooh. I'll spend his last card to move. I'll move into here. That's going to trigger this guy to follow. Now, when he follows and moves into her space, she is going to use her rifle to deal two damage to him. That will defeat him, and she'll get her blood echo for that. And that was that, was that card there. So I won't be able to go to the Hunter's Dream again because I'm out of cards at this point, but that was pretty successful overall. I will definitely take that. All right, so that is the end of the round. Then we'll move into his, or the enemy activation. So this guy is going to move forward, but he doesn't, he can't do anything else. 
So that'll finish off there. We are going to respawn everything. So he is going to go back where he came from. We have a new guy down here. We'll have a new mob and Scourge Beast. And another mob there and up top. Lots of mobs. Mobs everywhere. And then I do have a consumable chest there. And that finishes off that. So then our guys will redraw their cards. Okay. And then it's into our turns. How do we want to do this? So... I think I will start with the Holy Blade. So I'm going to do a move action. I'm going to use her to move. I'll move one here and then I'll move into here. So let's see what we find. We found the chapel, not what I was looking for. Well, kind of, but not particularly. And this guy comes with. When the hunter ends their move on the chapel, I'm going to have to reveal card 39. So I did that, so let's go ahead and take care of that. And that is the, the chapel is also going to trigger its own event that I'm going to have to handle. So let's go ahead. I guess I get to choose the order that I resolve things. I might as well resolve it in this, this one first. So let's do 39 first. Ominous warnings. So I'm going to distribute the old hunter's bone reward and repeating pistol firearm among the hunters. As you enter the old chapel, the the hunter comes to. He stands, although weakly, that the thanks like looks like my hunt has ended for now. But be warned, I believe there there to be some greater threat out there this night. Something greater drives these beasts forward though what i do not know okay so at least it completes it i do get the hunter the old hunter's bone throw me a bone and i do get the repeating pistol so i'll take that i'm gonna go ahead and give the repeating pistol to my hunter up here replacing his that'll be good and then the old hunter's bone this one is when you are attacked automatically automatically dodge that attack Allows the art of quickening, a technique particular to the first hunters. So I think I'll give that to him as well. And that'll finish him off as he has all uh, that he can carry. Okay, so that will take care of that. Now I have to take care of this one. So that's card 29. So let's see what that one is. So this one is the chapel. As you approach the old chapel, the smell of warding incense fills your nose. You cautiously press on the large wooden doors. If you have the moment of mercy, reveal card... Oh, no. <laughs> I do have moment of mercy. Otherwise, I would reveal card 33 instead. I have a bad feeling about this. So card 30... Let's see. Is the massacre at the chapel so the interior of the chapel lies covered with blood corpses litter the ground at the center a figure lies hunched feeding upon the remains as it rises and turns to face you you see that it is garbed in the tattered clothes of the girl you chose to spare oh man <laughs> so my mercy did not pay off so i'm going to surround the chapel uh, with fog gates well, that kind of helps. That way, then the enemies aren't coming in, at least. And then I'm going to spawn one female beast patient onto the chapel. And I'm going to bring her card out as well. So let's go ahead and flip through her card so that we have an attack. Okay. And it respawns at that point during a reset, which we just went through, so we don't have to worry about that. And it is immune to the effects of... Of the chapel complete this mission by slaying the beast patient all right so i do have two cards remaining she only has three damage i will i will go ahead and attack her might as well 
So I'm going to do that. That's going to let me draw two. So I have to reshuffle this. Actually, I might as well do it onto that one. Get the extra, get the extra damage. Okay. Let's see what I got here. So I got a stagger and a dodge. So I think I'm going to take that dodge, and then I'll discard that one. So let me switch these around. Okay. So let's see what she does. She is going to do her special. Her special is a fast attack. Does two damage. And then I'm going to flip another enemy action. If basic, the attack does plus two damage. If it's an ability or special, it gains stagger and poison. Yeesh. Okay, so we got to flip another one. So let's see what it does. Either way, I'm going to I'm going to dodge. Luckily, it doesn't increase its speed. All right, and it is a special again. So it will add that stagger and poison so i am going to dodge that so that'll clear that does one damage to her anytime i clear a uh, space and then my attack is going to go off so it's going to do three damage to her and that will finish her off so i will get my third blood echo for that that'll take care of her and that'll complete that, so I have to reveal card 32. All right, Price of Weakness. Distribute one consumable. So I'll go ahead and grab that. We have the Beckoning Bell. And I get a new rune. So let's see what we get. It is the Formless. Formless. There it is. All right, so this is, on the Hunter's turn, I get to refresh my firearm. That's really handy for her. So I will definitely keep that one. And I can distribute these. So I will give it to her because she could use that to get one of those beasts to come out. And that is the second mission that is going to clear this, the Fog Gates, as we did defeat her. And that will remove her as well. I have one action left. I think it is time to go to the Hunter's Dream. So I will do that. So I'll spend that to, to go to the Hunter's Dream. So that's going to clear her. I am going to take her miniature off right away. Move that up. I get my health back. Flip over my gun. And then I get to spend my Blood Echo, so she's going to get three new cards. All right, let's see what we got here. So I definitely want... Uh, I thought I wanted that one, but that doesn't clear it. Otherwise, that would have been great. Um, so let's do Swift instead. That gives me plus one damage and plus one speed, so that could be really handy. Then I have block two. Let's do this one instead. We'll go agile. That's just another stagger and a plus one speed. And another one. Um, I think I will take that one there. So that'll and add another counter strike to it. Okay, then I have to choose which cards I'm going to get rid of. So I'll get rid of a draw one. I'll get rid of one of those. And I think I'll get rid of... So I, yeah, I do have a... Oh, oh, I don't have any more staggers in here that are basics. So yeah, I think I'll do that one. Okay. Add these back in. And shuffle these up. Okay, so that takes care of her turn. Then it moves into my other player's turn. As she went into the Hunter's Dream, it doesn't, none of the enemies activate in that situation. So let's see, with my Hunter there, 
I think I will start by, I'm going to move into here. Then I will spend one to pick that up. Let's see what he gets. I have a pebble, so I get to move one enemy within two spaces up to two spaces. So that's good. And then I'm going to spend my last one there to go to Hunter's Dream as well, as he has he is full on his Blood Echoes. So I'll go ahead and clear those as well. Clear all this. I get to flip that back over. My gun is already flipped over, and I do get my points back. I'm going to move him over <laughs> and move that up as well. And now I get to choose my three for him. So I think I definitely want that dodge for sure. And I'll do the stagger and draw one. And for the last one, ooh, that's a stagger and clear. That would be good for her. I think I'll do the swift, which is the damage and plus one. And that's another good one. So she's going to have to, she want, definitely is going to want to grab some of those. Those will be really nice for her. Okay, now I gotta choose what I'm gonna get rid of. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Take another basic, get rid of that basic there. And do I do the stagger or the draw? I guess I think I'll just keep his even, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that for now. So I, I do like all the staggers with him, especially on that one side that's been really handy. Okay, discard those. And that'll end his turn. So then we're gonna advance again at the end of the beginning of the new round. So then our hunters will draw their new hands of cards. And he got that right away. And then it's back into our turns. So what do I want to do? I will go ahead and I think I'll go with him first. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and go here. I do get to choose my side. Do I want to stay with that? I think I'll stay on this side. So I'm going to spend this to move. So I'm going to move two into there. And I might as well attack him. Let's go ahead and attack and see what happens here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then his response is a special. So it, it cannot be staggered. It deals two damage to all the hunters in this space unless they dodge. There aren't any other hunters to, to worry about there. So I will dodge it with this one. This is a counter strike. I'll do it. It doesn't really matter where I do it, I guess. I'll do it on that there. So that's going to deal two damage to him. And then my attack is going to do three more damage to him. And I dodge his effects, so that will actually eliminate him right off the bat. And I will get the Blood Echo for that. And that is the end of his turn. And there isn't anybody that is going to be activated enemy-wise. So that will finish his turn off there. So... Then we'll move into the Holy Blade. She is going to... Oh, before his turn ends, I'll go ahead and spend that. That'll add that first token there. So then in her turn, she'll go ahead and go on that tile as well. I will spend this one here to move into his tile. I will do... I'm going to go ahead and spend one of these bells to bring one of those Surge, Scourge Beasts in there due to this ability. That's me discard a consumable card to spawn a Scourge Beast. So then I am going to attack them by doing this. Let's me draw another card. And then its response is a basic attack. Their basics are a quick attack at two damage. I'll go ahead and spend this to... Dodge that and clear, does one damage from that. 
And then my follow-up is going to do three damage thanks to that shard there. So that will eliminate him. I do get a blood echo for that and a corpse token. So then I'll spend that on that as well. I have one card left, which I could use to pick up there. I think I will do that. Yes. I'll spend that to pick up that consumable because we're going to go into a new respawning step here in just two seconds. So let's see what we get. Uh, Hunter's turn. I can heal too. That's, that's a nice card. All right. Then it is the enemy's turn again. None of the enemies are around where they would move. So back into beginning of the round, we move that forward. And it's a new spawning step. So we'll add that token back. And then we have a new Huntsman's Minion that's going to come out there. Other than that, I have another consumable there. All right, then we'll reveal new cards. Lots of dodge. I think I'm going to start with the Holy Blade first. So she's going to spend her first card to move. She'll move up one. And she's going to end her move there. Then this guy's going to follow suit. And she's going to use her rifle to deal two damage to him. And then she will go ahead and attack. So I'm going to spend this one here. This is going to do a stagger and it's plus one speed. So it's actually a speed three. Then let's see what he does. It's an ability. So his ability, the hunter must discard one card or their attack suffers minus two speed and they cannot dodge. So it's a speed three. So we drop it down to a speed one. And then I have to flip over another card. They cannot dodge. Um, that spoils my plan. I was hoping to finish him off, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So I'm going to let it go through. I will not discard the card. I think I can still pull this off. So then I reveal a new card. It's a basic attack. So it's three damage on me. I will take that damage. Or yeah. I don't have anything else that can stop that. Then my attack is going to go through and it's going to do two damage to him. So that'll put him up to four. And then I'm going to end my turn there. He will attack during his turn. It's a basic attack. I will dodge that, which is going to clear and do one damage. So that will kill him before he gets to do his attack. So that'll get me my second Blood Echo. So then it's going to move over to my other player to go. So Saw Cleaver, what do we want to do with Saw Cleaver? I only have one spot open. So I'm going to spend one to flip my weapon. And then I'm going to go ahead and move, so I'm going to do that one there to move, and I'll move up into this tile, so use it for this clinic, so we're going to reveal that, and I have to, that'll be two spaces into there, so that stops there, and that's going to trigger that last card, the, uh, the card there, so it's 24. Okay, so this one is, a soft voice addresses you. A hunter, I'm terribly sorry, but you may not enter. I am Yusufika, this is my clinic, and I cannot allow any chance of infection within, but I might be able to aid you. I'm working on a cure for this terrible plague, but I require blood samples from those freshly infected. Will you assist me? And then with this one, I have to slay a hunt mob hunter mob or huntsman's minion while in this well it is in this space or this tile so i have to basically lure one of those guys there and then i have to kill it there so there is one that's going to spawn here or i can start pulling another enemy over all right so that'll take care of that i do have the teleport i think i will spend this to 
get this beast in there with me. And then I'm going to go ahead and attack that beast with that. All right. So we'll see how this works out. All right. So then the beast will attack. It's a basic that works out. So I will use my pistol to stagger that and not take any damage. And then this is going to resolve. So I'm going to do two, three, and then my stagger also does an additional damage. So that's four. So that's also going to eliminate that beast. It doesn't help with the side mission I'm doing there. But I do get that corpse token that I needed and a second blood echo. So now I just need to make my way back to the graveyard to trigger that event. All right, so that is the end of his turn. There aren't any enemies that are connected to his tiles, so that will trigger the end there. And then we'll reveal new cards for our characters. My saw cleaver first. I'm going to go ahead and use his hand lantern. That'll let him teleport to a space that has a lantern on it. So I'm going to go to the central lamp tile. And then I will do... I'll use this card to move. So I'm going to move one and then back, bringing that mob with me. And I'm going to go ahead and do it again to move into here. So that mob will follow there. And then I will spend my last card to move again. So I'm going to move here. Okay, so then that'll end his turn. Wait, no, I want to end here because otherwise that mob won't follow. So then I'll end there. That'll move the mob into that space. But it won't get to attack, so that finishes off his turn. Then we're over to the Holy Blade. So she's going to go and... With her, she's going to go ahead and spend her card there to refresh her firearm. I will spend this one here to move. That'll bring the mob with into that space. I'm going to spend the, this one here to let me heal two, because I'm probably not going to be able to dodge. And I'm going to end my turn there. So then the enemy is going to go. They're going to move in. I will go ahead and use my gun first off. That'll deal two damage to them. I will not attack them as I have my counter strike here. So then I will reveal it's an ability. So the ability, you know, I'm going to flip another card and it's going to add plus one speed and damage to that. So it's a special. So it's going to be a speed three and it's going to do three damage, stagger, and stun. I will do my dodge, though, instead, and then that is going to deal two damage to that enemy, and I avoid their damage, so that will eliminate them. I'll get my third blood echo, and they get removed. And then that also triggers this card here, as I did defeat a hunter mob on that space. So then I'm going to reveal card 25. Okay, 25. You knock on the heavy wooden door. After a moment, you hear Isaka or Yusuka, you have brought me samples immensely useful. Perhaps you can be of further use. I, I require the still warm blood of one of those beasts. Lure one here, strike it down, and I'll handle the rest. As you leave, you cannot help but feel an underlying ruthlessness has replaced the compassion in her tone. So this one is going to have me ca reveal card 27. And I can complete this mission by slaying a Scourge Beast while it is on that tile. So card 27 is... All right, so with this one, Hunter, I would ask one other task of you. Should you find any survivors out there, send them here. I And I swear... On my Hippocratic Oath, I will protect them, perhaps even cure them, and reward you for your efforts, of course. Hunters can also gain one survivor token when they pick up consumables from those spaces. 
These tokens are lost if the hunter teleports or goes to the dream. Hunters ending a move on the, the clinic tile place their held tokens on this card. You can complete this mission by having a, a number of tokens based on the number of hunters plus one. And if you do, then you get to play, you get to reveal card 28. So that's like a, a whole nother submission there. Okay. So at this point, then I just have to defeat a Scourge Beast on that tile. Okay, so I can I can basically do that by spending one of my cards to do that. I do have one other card, but I have no other spaces there. And I, I am full on Blood Echoes. I could go to the Hunter's Dream. I think I will do that because she there's a couple of cards in there that she definitely wants right away. So I will spend my last card to go to the Hunter's Dream. That lets me clear that. I get to heal and flip this back over. Flip my gun over. I do have to place her there and move that up one. And then these go away. Okay. That's everything there. So then let's get some cards. So I definitely want this one. Bring out another one. Ooh. I'll take that one, and I'll take this one. That's all three of those cards get to clear, so that's nice. And then I gotta choose cards to discard. Okay, so I'll discard that one as that's a basic. Ooh, now the, ch the choices. Don't have many basics left. Okay, so I think I will drop one of the tireless cards and I'll drop one of those stagger cards. So that will let me keep these. And I'll switch her back over to that other. Oh, I had two more here. Is there? Yeah, no. Want to keep those. And that ends her turn, which is the end of the round. So move this forward again. We're closing in on the ends here. I need to pick up the pace a little bit here. I only have a couple more rounds to go. So at this point, then we'll reveal new cards. That's a lot of clearing. Okay, and it's back into our turns to go. So if I want to clear that last one there, I do need a to do that. So yeah, I think I will start with her. I'll place her on that tile. Then I will spend... Spend this one here to get one of those guys. And then I will attack. So I'm going to use this card to attack. It is going to clear it right away, so I'm just going to turn it to its side to signify that. That does one damage to him for clearing the card. Then his card is going to be a basic attack. Which I could, I could just dodge. Yeah, I'm going to dodge that. So that's going to clear, do another damage. But then this is going to go through and do enough to defeat him. So that will defeat him. I get another Blood Echo token. And then I have to resolve... Okay, so I have to do card 26. And this is her research. So I get to distribute one consumable card. I have Lead Elixir. This is going to let me block one point of damage on an attack. That's good. And then I get her Blood Vial. Okay, and that one it lets me heal two on a hunter's turn. So that's definitely good. And I'll give that to my hunter over here. So now she has her four. Okay. All right. Uh, she has one action left. These both get cleared. 
So I could move, but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna wait there. So that will finish off her turn. And there aren't any enemies to activate, so then we'll move into my other hunter's turn here. I will start off his turn by placing that last token. So that will trigger this card. So this one's going to have me reveal card 19. And this one is the continuation of the Source of the Scourge. So now that we have suitable baits, setting up a trap for these instinctual beasts will be easy enough. As we prepare, we should also investigate the havens across the district, where the common folk gather during nights of the hunt, see, and to see just how far the infection has spread throughout Central Yarnan. So with this one, the hunters, when the hunters have collected at least two insights this chapter, which we already have, I have three there, so that will trigger that, and it's going to be card 20. So this one is, from deep in the district, a piercing shriek rends through the night air. This is not the familiar roar of the Scourge Beast. With a loud crash, the monster's figure lands upon our corpse-laden trap. So surrounds the uh, graveyard tile with fog gates. All right. and spawn the cleric beast on its uh, lantern space. So I did have to look up in the FAQ on this one. There is no lantern space on the graveyard tile, so it's simply going to be placed in the middle of that tile. So then I'll go ahead and place him out. Kaboom! And I get to use my second tray now. So this one is designed for bosses, and it's going to hold all their cards as well as their stat card, and then on the side, if you're using any insight tokens to mark the, the number of insight that it has or whatever, you will you can use this instead and mark those and then move that down as you go along. So that's really cool, I, I like that as well, that's really neat. Okay, so when the Clerical Beast enters phase two, then I'm gonna reveal cards 21 and 22. So with, my, with our game here, I'm playing with two players, so I have to do 14 damage to the beast in order to get him to phase two. And I'll use that one there to move into his space. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attack him with Agile. So it's actually going to be a speed four attack that's going to stagger him. So then we'll reveal his card. And it is a speed two four damage. It cannot be dodged. After this attack, move the clerical beast one piece away. Before this attack, the hunter may exhaust their firearm to place one insight token on the uh, cleric beast's card. This attack deals one damage, or minus one damage per insight token. And my firearm has not been replenished yet, so I cannot do that. So it cannot be dodged, but I am going to stagger him so I won't have to worry about that. So I'm going to do one damage from the attack and one damage from stagger as it does an additional damage to him. So I'm gonna go ahead and place two next to him. Now he does move, so I'll move him up instead. And that'll finish off that attack. So then it'll go, I'm gonna end my turn there as I do have that dodge card to help me with that. So then I'm gonna go into the enemy's turn. He's gonna move back into that space with me and he's gonna attack. Uh, yes, I will not attack him back. So with this one, it's another speed two, four damage. This one targets all hunters in this space. Before this attack, one hunter in this space may exhaust their firearm to place one inside token on the clerical beast card. Then it's gonna reduce this attack by one damage per token that's on there so again i don't have my firearm cannot be fired at this point so i will split play the uh, dodge card to dodge that attack so no damage there okay so that will end our hunter's turns that is going to trigger a respawn so the enemy is going to heal his two damage that he took and uh, let's see i do have some respawning to do so these guys come back there and that's it with that all right we're closing in on it 
So going back into my Ender's Turns, I am going to keep that card and reveal two new ones. Nice. I think I'm going to go with, with him first. So... Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and transform my weapon. So I'll go ahead and clear these, flip it over. And that will replenish this for free. Okay, so then I will attack. Might as well go with the... Go with that one there, and that lets me draw a card as well. So then the enemy will go. Let's see what he's got to say about this. So it's a speed 3, 3 damage, stagger. The hunter may exhaust their firearm to place one inside token on this, which I will do at this point. That will add one there. Or how is that set up? Number one's there, so I'll just place the inside token on there now. So now there's one on there. So now this has decreased that damage by one. And I definitely am going to have to dodge. So I'm going to do a counter strike. So it's going to dodge that attack. And it'll do two damage to the enemy for that. So I'll add that two damage back. And then I'm also going to do the five damage from my slow attack. So that's just going to add five damage onto him. Okay. Um... And I think I'll end my turn there. So then the enemy is going to go. I will spend this on this spot here. That's going to increase the speed of that by one. And it's going to do an additional damage. So the enemy is going to go. And his is a speed two, four damage. It targets all hunters in this space. Before this attack, one hunter in this space may exhaust. Okay. Which I don't have any. My firearm isn't ready again. But I do have an inside token on there, so it would only do three damage for this attack. And I will, I'm going to go ahead and use my, the bone. So this says, when attacked, I can automatically dodge that attack. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that's going to dodge the attack. And then it's going to do three more damage to him. So now he's up to eight damage. I'll just pull one of these. All right, so getting there, getting there. All right, so that ends my hunter's turn on that one. And he's still full health, so that's good. He did have the throwing knife. That would have been handy to have, but I f did not use that. Okay, then it's going to move into my other hunter's turn. She is going to... She'll go ahead and spend this one here to move. Now let's remove three spaces. One, two, and three. So she'll move in there with him. And she's going to go ahead and attack. She'll go ahead and spend this card. Let's her draw two. Choose one and discard the other. So I'll keep that one. Or, no, I'll do it on this one here. I keep thinking that's a card that's on that space. Okay, then we'll go ahead and go with his reaction to that. It's recovery. Move all inside tokens on the beast's card and block two from the hunter's attack. Shuffle the beast's action deck. Okay. That's nasty. Okay, so I would still do one damage to him at least, though. From my attack and most of his attacks then are going to hit both of us so I got to be careful about that so let's go ahead and try it I will go ahead and attack I'm going to spend that one there that lets me draw a card and then it lets me clear this slot. So that's gonna do one damage to him from that. So that's up to 10. Then his card 
is an overhead slam targets all hunters in the space before this attack the hunter in this space may exhaust their firearm to place i will that adds that token in there and it's minus one damage per insight token she will dodge and that clears that as well it does another damage so she dodges it he cannot so he's going to take three from that attack and then her attack goes through so that's two more so that's gonna do that's five total on him so that puts him at 13 so one more damage will take care of it and she'll go ahead and i'm gonna go ahead and spend this to reactivate my gun and i will uh, i will attack him again why not i'm going to go with a fast attack and it's going to increase that speed by one so that's a four speed attack and it's going to stagger him so let's see what i get it's a lunging swipe it cannot be dodged uh, before this attack i can spend my gun so i will do that again that'll increase that to two and then it will carry out so it's going to do its damage first it'll do that one last damage that i needed that's 14 damage to move him into phase two we'll go ahead and carry out the rest of his attack though so it's going to do two damage to my hunter over here and with my hunter here she it'll do two to her as well because she can't dodge it all right so that is 14. where was that at? here it is so that's going to have me reveal cards 21 and 22 and he does enter phase two at that point so 21 21 the beast has become enraged lashing out with deadly force if we continue this fight here the damage to the city would be extreme something we cannot afford we must lure this beast someplace more isolated I'm going to go ahead and you have to remove the fog gates from the graveyard and remove all inside tokens from the beasts and then you, to complete the hunt when the be the cler clerical beast enters the tomb so i have to get him up here okay and then i also have to reveal card 22. so unstoppable fury the cleric beasts cannot be damaged the cleric beast respawns to the graveyard space on resets so i definitely want to make sure that he's out of there before that happens at the end of each round the cleric beast makes a special bonus activation moving toward the and attacking the nearest hunter with the lowest hp so he gets to activate again at the end of each round okay so for before moving on i did make a little mistake so this is actually a reshoot and i give a lot of props to those people in hollywood that do the continuity correction uh, getting everything back into place took a long time but i wanted to make sure that this was as accurate as possible so during editing i did notice that i ended my hunter's turn and i didn't activate the boss to take their turn and then he would get an additional action so i wanted to go back and correct that so that it's as accurate as possible instead of just pointing it out at the end of the video or putting up a note or anything like that so with that being said let's go ahead and move back into the action here so it's still the end of my hunter's turn so she is going to spend her card here to heal these two points and then there's nothing else she can do at this point so then i'm going to end her turn now so then the boss is going to activate and so we're going to reveal the boss card so this one is jumping smash so all hunters in this space must dodge at a slow speed or suffer two damage and stun so all of my hunters my poor hunter over here he has no options at all so he is going to lose his last hit point he will go on Hunter's Dream. He doesn't lose both of his Blood Echoes as he has that token there. So he will spend the second one and I will gain, I think I'll gain this. I have to move that forward for him going into the 
Hunter's Dream. Reveal a new one here. And then this will go away. And then he does get his cards back. And I will spend one of these draw one cards for that. Okay, and then these get flipped back over. I do get to... I think I'll leave that there with him. All right, so then it's over to my other hunter. She has to take care of that as well. It's going to do two damage and stun. So she she has to take it. So that's two damage. And then the stun is going to have her discard a card. If she can't, then she has to drop another health. So she's going to lose three health from that. And then I do have to flip another boss action card. So then let's resolve that. So this is a grab and toss. It's a speed three, three damage, stagger, and stun. Oh, no, not again. Uh, with this one, it's also going to move the hunter one space away. But unfortunately, I could, I could dodge, or I can use this to stop one point of damage, uh, which is going, this is going to do three. But unfortunately, that stun is going to get me. So that would have been four hit points that I would have had to stop, and uh, that's going to do it for me. So she is also going to die. That's going to put a ton of pressure on me for this one. That's going to move that gauge forward again. She is also going to go into the hunter stream. She does lose that blood echo for that. So then gain these back. She does get to flip over all this stuff though. And then the enemy would activate again, but he is not going to as there is nobody for him to activate or move towards. So he's just going to stay right there as there are no hunters currently out on the area. So then we'll go back into our hunter's turn. So that will end the round. Then we're going to advance. So we are in the final round. We have resets to do. I also have to clear this health from him since he went into stage two anyways. So then let's handle the resets. All right, and yeah, that's everybody's good. There isn't anything else to adjust. So it is in the final round. So if I don't get it done here, it's not going to happen. All right, so then I'll reveal my cards. Let's see what do we get. All right. Whew. Okay, so... I'll go ahead and start with the Holy Blade first. I'm going to have her come out here. Now, the one thing with this one, again, like I pointed out, with this tile, according to the card, it does say that there is a fog or a, uh, a lantern space in there, but the tile itself doesn't have that. So they did correct that as far as the FAQ is concerned with how he works, but I don't know if it, if it means that the tile itself is supposed to have that. So obviously this would work a little bit differently if that tile had a lantern or, or a lamp in there, because I would have just started in that space. But I'm going to pretend that it doesn't, as I don't know, and I want to make sure I get this as accurate as possible. So then it's going to go into her turn. I will spend this one here to move back into that space. Then I'm going to spend another one to move out of it. I need him to follow me. So he's going to move into that space there. I will stop there. So then the enemies are going to activate. He is going to activate first. Moving in there. He will attack. And I am not going to attack. So then this is recovery. Move all insight tokens from the cleric beast's card. Block two from the hunter's attack. And shuffle the beast's deck. Action deck. So then we'll get these out. These are all going to get shuffled back up. And then we also have to move those other enemies in. Okay, so that'll take care of that. And this guy's going to move in, and so is that guy. So I'll just stick him over here, and this guy is also going to move up. So he would move first, and these two would move in. This one is going to attack her, so I'm also I'm not going to retaliate again. And yeah, all right. So then it's a basic attack. I will dodge that with hers. That'll get cleared and do a damage to that enemy in there. And... Oh, I forgot to put her health back from that last one. Like, she's dead. How is that possible? 
she hasn't done anything yet. Okay, so that will take care of, of all of that. So her turn is over at this point. So then it's down to my last hunter. Oh boy. Okay, so he is going to come back. He will also come back into that space there with the rest of these guys. Let me kind of shift him in there. And I will spend, I'll spend this one here to move. So he's going to move one, two into there. That's going to move this guy forward, that guy forward, and that guy. Then I am going to, I think I'm going to use my pebble. So this one lets me, on a hunter's turn, I can move one enemy within two spaces, up to two spaces. So I'm going to use that on Mr. Big Bad here. He's going to move one and two. I'm going to put him into there. And then I think I'm going to attack real quick. I'm going to go ahead and attack them. So I'm going to spend that on, on them there. They are going to attack. They're going to do a special. So theirs is a speed two, stagger and stun. And I'm going to go ahead and use my card up here. This automatically lets me dodge and attack. And it doesn't specify if it's a basic or special or anything, so that'll work. So I don't have to worry about their attack. And I will go ahead and do four damage to them, which is going to eliminate them. And I will get a blood echo token for that. And then my last card I'm going to use to move. So I'm going to move one, two, and he is going to follow with me. And he is in the, to the tome, or the tomb. So that is going to trigger the end of the game, as all I have to do to complete the hunt is to have the cleric beast enter the tomb tile. So he is in there, and so I'm going to reveal and read card 23. And with this one is Trapping the Beast. So I distribute one Blood Echo and the Beast Roar reward among hunters. So what's the Beast Roar? Okay, so this one is Hunter Turn. Move all enemies in your space up to two spaces away. That could be really handy as well. Ooh. Um... I'm really happy with what I have though, so I think I'm just going to simply discard that. And I do get a Blood Echo that I can distribute among the Hunters. She has one and she her deck is almost full at this point, or it is full. So I think I'm going to give it to him because I think he was a little short anyways. So that'll get him up to hopefully getting all his cards upgraded. So that will finish that part off. And I'll go ahead and take care of those. So I'll do his first. Well, that's it of mission two. I hope you found that helpful. And if, as you notice, everything is gone already, I had another technical problem with my camera cutting out on me. Even after all these years of doing this stuff, I still make mistakes and it just seems to keep rolling. So anyways, with this, I hope you found this video helpful. Also, definitely go and check out Gomer's Gadgets and Gaming on his Etsy shop. These are really cool products. Highly recommend them, and I will be using them in my final video as well for Bloodborne and any other Bloodborne videos I do in the future. So definitely go and check that out. Again, I'll have a link in the description below to his Etsy store so you can take a look at his products. And let me know in the comments below again if, the, if I did anything else to make mistakes or if you noticed anything else or just to say hi i love hearing from you and talking with you back and forth so drop some comments in there let me know how i'm doing and this, this series is rounding its end i'll have one more episode of this so let me know in the comments below what other kind of games you'd like to see some of these with. I had a ton of fun with this one, so I would definitely like to do some more of these, whether it's covering a small mini campaign in Shadows of Brimstone or Too Many Bones or all the other types of games that I have behind me. There's so many that I would love to get a campaign in on. So let me know below which, what you would like to see. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and really do thank you with the bottom of my heart. So until next time, I will see you later.